Hello and welcome to my tutorial of how to do grayscale and shading. So at the top you're going to notice that um, I already have kind of a bit of a grayscale and this is ranging from 0, zero as in pure white all the way to black which is uh, 100 so I'm going to go ahead and just label this for you guys. So 0, why is that on the soft blush? There we go. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So if you want to do things in like grayscale, it will be best to like do it in these kind of intervals. And then when you do do those intervals, that's when you can start blending. And speaking of blending, that's the next part because for you to be able to kind of like do shading, you have to like kind of know how to blend things. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my soft brush, or it's, yeah, it's a soft brush. It is an airbrush. Airbrushes are the ones that kind of let. That's hold on. It's it's kind of like this one right here, the one where you see it's kind of like a hundred, two fifty. Those are kind of like airbrushes, where it's just all around soft. But then when it comes to the one I have, it could be soft or it could be kind of like kind of hard. It's just it's a little soft at the end. Anyways, so let's go ahead in terms of blending. We're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and grab a nice reddish pinkish color. There we go. And let's just say, oh, I want to blend it with a purple color. And you're like, how am I going to do a blend? So what you could do is you could go ahead and grab a little bit of whatever color you want basically of the two sources then you could start like lightly bringing it closer to there and you know it's like ooh what's this magical little color oh it's like a magenta and then you start bringing that one a little bit closer as well and then you're like ooh look at this magic and then you're like oh but how am I going to connect them even more so what you could go ahead and do is you could grab some of this color right here and then just like, blending it out that doesn't make sense. Here, let me start over. <laughs> Anyways, so, well, I shouldn't be even be doing colors first. I should be showing you guys how to do it in like in grayscale first. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this color right here. And it's like, if you want to blend, you can go ahead and two ways you could do it. What's that? Two ways you could do it is, um lightly bring the color out and then the way I have it there um because as you notice it already has like a little bit of a gradient on it I have it where on Photoshop I had transfer and then the transfer basically makes it so then it has that gradient so depending on the amount of pressure you have on it it could be dark or it could be light and also the one I have it sets like the size of it as well so in a way it's kind of like a pencil but a weird pencil <laughs> so um, that's one way for you to be able to start out because I, I think this one is better because you get an idea of like a block out of what you want to do or you could do it like a little bit harder by grabbing like that color in between and then you could just like go ahead and start blending that out but I'm gonna go ahead and grab this color bring it out and if you notice I'm using the brush on a big size and it's better when it comes to blending to use a big size because if you do a little, it's going to become streaky here, I'll show you. So here's a little. I'm going to go ahead and grab this color in the middle and just like start blending it out. And and I'm going to be doing kind of the same thing I did to be able to bring this color outward. And what I'm doing, um, you could either just go to the eyedrop tool to be able to get the color that you want or hold alt if you're using Photoshop like me. And holding alt does the little eyedrop thing. And then just start to blend it out grab the colors in between and if you notice it's already kind of getting streaky and you don't want it to be streaky you want to be able to get it where it's a smooth gradient so let's go ahead and undo all that oops got rid of that maybe it could bring here and let's go ahead and shut up Photoshop you're not funny okay okay I get it <laughs> Photoshop and me we have a good relationship right no, I'm kidding so you could go ahead and just grab this color in between and then just kind of work it in there or work there for a little bit so then you can see like oh it gets lighter here but it gets darker here so what you could do is 
the way that this light one here is kind of getting too much into the dark area more than I like, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this dark and then make it a little, I don't know, let's just have it where I bring it some more, and then I just kind of gently go over it. And you notice it still has a bit of that gradient there, but then also it's, it's slowly starting to get there. So basically when it comes to blending, um, and also by the way, this is all how I do things. You don't have to do it, I'm just showing you how I do it. And if you find another way, awesome for you. It, it really is awesome that you find a different way, especially if it's easier for you. It's just this is kind of the way how I do it. And um, in a way, I'm still kind of like perfecting my blending. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab these in between colors, occasionally going to the one where it's like technically at that line there. And slowly work my way up. And gently too. And then pretty soon it's going to be becoming part of the background. And you just It's just a process of grabbing the in-between colors, gently bringing them out, and then finding to get rid of those little streaks. So that it becomes a smooth gradient. And sure, you can go ahead and use the gradient tool, but I don't like that. And also, um, I like this one because even if it does show a little bit of streak, it shows that like I know how to blend. Or I mean, it's okay to show a little bit of streak, especially if it's for the purpose of the drawing. Because when it comes to your art, everything you do is for the sake of the drawing. And um, if it helps it, it helps it. If it hurts it, it hurts it. And for this one, I'm just trying to make a smooth gradient. Very smooth, very soft blending into the background. And right here, it's getting a little, getting a little crowded. So, go ahead and bring this out. Grab that color, bring it out again. Oops. Photoshop, please work with me. We still have a lot to do. Uh, and generally this is kind of how you blend. You, you could use a hard brush as well if you wanted to do this. Like another brush I use is called, under here I have a Blendy Boomy for Buffington. Buffington is the name of my um, instructor, the one that helps me get a passion for environment and light. And if you're like, oh, how do you do a gradient or how do you do a soft um, blending with that? And it's like, oh, it's so hard. How do you do it? It's like, you can still do it. All you have to do is just go up here and bring down the opacity so it becomes a bit softer and then bring the flow down. One that I like to work on is the opacity as 85 and then the flow as like 55. And then you also notice this one right here applies, oh, oh applies, always uses pressure size or whatever, whatever, but that, that helps it where um, it isn't just solid thing, it also gets lighter and lighter. And right now you're wondering, oh, how come it's not getting lighter and lighter? Most likely, transfer is not on, so I'm going to turn that little biznatch on. And then, see? Look at that. Already softer. So I'm going to start it off hard, and then slowly bring it up and slowly taking the pressure off my pen. And then this one, you still go in there, go in between the colors, slowly bring it out. And occasionally I did stream myself doing some digital painting. Some of you guys were there and saw it, and I used this brush quite a bit when it comes to blocking in and um it's just yeah truth be told when it comes to blending it's kind of therapeutic for me because it's like relaxing and it just helps me be able to be like yeah it's just gonna go in there slowly taking out the streaks it's somewhat satisfying for me and even though these gradients are not like gorgeous they're not the best they're not. I mean this one still has a whole bunch of streaks and you could keep spending a lot of time into making these guys like smooth. Let's go ahead and make this guy smooth. Be a good idea. Of one. And it's okay for you to occasionally like. I want this one to be like the big prominent one that slowly blends out. And that's okay. I mean, it's okay for you to go back and do like a little bit of repair, a little bit of tweaking. And because this is like 
painting, it's like, and also it's digital painting, so you have to control Z anyway. But with Photoshop, there's a limit of the control Z, like I, I could only go back so far. And then when it comes to digital painting, I constantly go over that allowance, if that's the right term for it. But I constantly go over that, and it's like, oh man, oh, I wanted to delete that, but I want to delete, oh, whatever. But, yeah, you could just spend, like, so much time just doing this, but um, it's good to not spend too much time on it, because, especially when it comes to a blend, unless it's, like, a really, really big one, people are, like, going to be looking at it far, and um, the way I see it, it's noticeable that this one is still kind of streaky, still needs to be blended, but this one's pretty smooth. Isn't that weird, huh? <laughs> that the one that is softer... I'm still working on, but then this one is generally okay in terms of the blending. But it's just showing that in terms of blending, it could be like, you could use any brush, you just kind of have to know how to use it. And you could spend like a lot of time just being able to learn how to use the straight brush. And there. So that's a general idea when it comes to blending. Uh, but the thing is, that's only like one little lesson. It's not the entire thing. The video is not going to be all about blending. This video is about shading. And so let's go ahead and hide these little buggers. Hide these little buggers. <laughs> and then let's go to a primitive. If you're wondering what a primitive is, it's just a basic shape like a cube, a sphere, a cone, cylinder, those basic shapes. And the one I like to work with, it's a sphere because it's um, round and pretty smooth. And then let's go ahead and do a sphere. I have it where it's already a sphere, but then if you want, you could go there. It's going to be the top left and the marquees. It's going to be rectangle, uh, elliptical, single row, blah, blah, blah. But then we're only here for elliptical. And then if you look here, if I use this, it's just going to be like, oh, how do I get the perfect circle? And you could spend a lot of time just trying to do guesswork. Or you can hold shift and it automatically fixes it for you. So then no matter where you put the mouse, it's going to be a perfect circle. So there you go. And then I want this to be a white sphere. So I'm going to do an alt backspace. And that fills in the area I have selected. And I want the sphere and the shadows to be on different layers. And the shadow, I'm going to make it at 80. And I'm going to go ahead and make it so it's like that. And this. Basically, when it comes to shadows, especially like this, um, it's going to be pretty flat. Uh, so it's going to be like a pretty flat oval or ellipse that I, I, as I know it. And yeah, I mean already from this you can already tell like, oh, it's a sphere with a shadow. But you kind of want to work a little bit more into it. So what I usually do is, since I already have the basic shapes I want, I go ahead and click the layer I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on the sphere. I'm going to do a layer. And then I'm going to hold Alt. And then when I bring it close to like the in-between, you're going to see this like square with like arrow. And then you click it, and then it's like, ooh, what's this? And the way, and the way that is, it's kind of like click to that. So then no matter where I draw, it's only going to stick to that sphere. Like even though I'm drawing over here, nothing's getting, like, it's not going to get on anywhere else. And then if I unclip it, wow, what is all this? Oh. But then I want to be clean, so poof. And... From here, I'm just going to go ahead and apply like the lighting. And I already kind of like a bit, got a bit of lighting, but then the shadow is too much, so I'm going to go ahead and bring the light that way. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to use my sexy, where is it? <laughs> Blendy Bloomy for Buffy's and Brush. I should rename it to Sexy Delicious because it is like so good. This brush is so good. It's like, so I'm going to go ahead and make it my Magical 8555 with the little circle thing. And the transfer is going to be on. I should probably set it like that. But I'm too lazy. Anyways, so when it comes to that, when it comes to shading generally, you want to try and block out the shading first. Because if you're focused on like trying to get all the gradients in there right away, you're going to be stressed on doing that. And you're going to be focused on a single area. It's going to be like, oh, why is it taking so long? Why is it being so weird? Blah, 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 blah. But um, it's good to be able to be like, okay, so here's the light side, here's the dark side, here's the shadow. Then you can continue. And when it comes to a sphere, if you look at a reference of a sphere, you're going to notice like 
for some reason there's like an area here that's kind of lighter even though it's in the shadow and the reason why that is because the light is reflecting and there is a little bit of light that's in the shadow just very very faint it prevents the shadow from being pure black that's why i didn't use pure black i used like an 80. and that light is kind of reflecting on the sphere so then some of the light is being reflected onto the ball and usually when it comes to um, the reflection on the sphere is going to be kind of the same tone or color as the whatever you're using. So let's go ahead and just grab the background since that's basically our table or whatever and then gently, just gently put it there. And that right there is called a reflective light. And it's reflective light because it's created because it's just reflecting off of different things. It, it's, it's more about light. Um, if you want two books to help you understand light a little bit more, I would recommend finding a book called Light for Visual Artists by Richard Yacht. It's a very good book. And Color and Light by James Gurney. Both of these books are amazing. They're the books that my teacher used to help us understand light and whatever. And it, it's very, very good. Very good. Uh, anyways, and one thing, speaking of shadow, uh, let's go ahead and grab this. And let's make it a little bit darker. Where's my dark? A little bit darker. Just a little bit. Because we want to make the Terminator lie. And then you're like, oh, Terminator. Oh, yeah. Get to the job of things. And you're like, don't. Like, it's called Terminator Line because that's where it's like, that's where it's the darkest. So let's go ahead and add that back for you. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit. Let's go ahead and like a 95. Close to black. And then it just slowly starts going there. And then when it comes to like it becoming lighter, um, you have to remember like where the light is touching. So let's just go ahead and have it where it's kind of right there. I mean, right now I'm just blocking it. I'm just blocking it. I'm not worried about doing all the blending yet. I'm just blocking it. And also, when it comes to the terminal line, it's kind of like, no, not, not. It's kind of thinnish in a way. It's just, it's the darkest area. And then, already right there, this thing is already starting to kind of pop. But the thing is, it still kind of looks flat. It's because I'm not shading it with the fork. I'm shading it as if it's just a flat plane. So, but then I'm just getting a basic shape. So, I'm just going to go ahead and make another layer, clip it so then it doesn't go off everywhere else, and then I'm going to start fixing it so then it starts forming with the ball. And remember, it's okay to be streaky at first. Because when it comes, this is just like getting everything ready. It's This is blocking and this is the sketching part. This is fixing everything up for the final thing. You can worry about the smaller things later. And let's go ahead and start. And let's, let's make that a little bit darker because it's, cause when it comes to the reflective light, um, typically it's going to be darker than it is over here. And see, these ones are like, Thirty and like pay attention to the numbers up here. It's about these are like tens to thirties, maybe forties, and it only starts getting to seventy and eighty when it gets closer to Terminator. But then over here, this color or this little tone is already at seventy, so that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and start doing some blends. And Sorry I'm going quiet, it's just, it kind of does take a little bit of concentrating, even though I did say it's kind of relaxing, it does take a little bit of concentrating, so got to get rid of all these streaks. And then already, if you notice, I'm, I'm going with the form of the actual sphere, and basically making it round where it's kind of like, curved and it isn't just straight lines and it's already kind of popping it's already starting to look realistic it's already starting to look like an actual sphere and for the sake of the video for the sake of the tutorial let's just say i'm done with the blending and now i want to do a shadow it's like oh it's all blended it's all gorgeous but then the shadow it looks flat especially compared to the sphere one thing you can go ahead and do is let's go ahead and do that little clip magic onto that layer five one thing i would recommend 
is always label your layers because you're going to lose track of everything, especially if you have like hundreds of layers. And putting them in folders, that's still going to be confusing. So sometimes, especially when I notice like all my layers starting to like build up, I just go in and label the important ones. Like this one is like, oh, this is the sphere. I spelled it wrong. <laughs> this is the shadow. This is the blend examples. And this is also a blend example. And example grayscale. Anyways, back to the important thing. So we're going to go ahead and go to the shadow. And then when it comes to shadow, it's darkest where the object is closest to like the ground. So basically, um, if you look at a reference of a sphere, it's going to be really, really dark around this area because that's where the object is closest to the surface or whatever. Or basically, it's where the object is closest to the shadow. So the blasphemy of getting that black and going ahead and putting it in here. And then we can start blending that out. But the thing is, the shadow is still dark. Even, but it still has that gradient. So then already, it's already looking like ooh, ooh, ooh. And then the sphere is already looking good. And it's turning into a sphere. But of course, you you will want to try and find times to be able to get in there, get rid of those streaks. And then when it comes to getting rid of the streaks, you can make the brush smaller, but it's still recommended that you keep it a big one. Why is it? Oh yeah, it is a big one. And then when it comes to blending, you don't have to stick with like the 80, 55, why is this 100? But you can always go ahead and like bring that down, bring the flow down, and then you can start doing feather touches, like light touches to it. The thing is, you don't want to focus too much on that. Say for example you're working on something big and um, you don't want to put too much focus on a single area especially if it's like small tiny details. Because if you're working pixel by pixel you're going to be so focused on working pixel by pixel it's going to look weird. And then when you finally like pull away you're going to be like oh something's not right. So that's why it's good to like occasionally zoom away from it see if it looks good. I mean, other than a few obvious streaks, this sphere looks pretty good. And Or, if you don't want to zoom away, you could always go ahead and look for the navigator on Photoshop. The way you find it, you go to the window up top, scroll down to the end where it's a navigator, and then this the navigator already shows you an example of how it looks like from far away. Especially, even if you're like zoomed in right here, it still shows like how it looks like from far away. So that's a really good thing to have. But, I'm sure some of you guys are like, but Azel, but Azel, we're going to be shading things that aren't primitive shapes. What do we do then? So, like for you, I already went ahead and got something where it's already kind of set. And of course, everyone's going to be like, oh, and also we're not going to be sticking clearly on just basic grayscale. We want to use color. We want to use like things to make it pretty. And it's like, that's perfectly fine. And I went ahead and got that ready for you. I went ahead and got this drawing I did a long while back, a really long while back, and um, you could find the line for this on my DeviantArt, it's called Victorian Girl, and um, I posted it there as a PNG so then anyone that wants to be able to color it in, you can go ahead and color it in yourself, this is the colors that I chose for this, and I'm going to be using her as an example of what I'm going to be doing, or rather how I handle shading when it comes to an actual person. And for this one, I'm going to be showing how to do it in the way I usually do it when I'm not worrying about homework assignments. Because technically I have two versions of how I do art. One version is when I'm doing like digital concept art where it all has to be like digitally painted beautiful. And then there's also the lazy me, which is basically the me that you see when I do strains or I do these kind of drawings where it's more illustration rather than concept art. And when it comes to those kind of drawings, I do block-ins. And I kind of stick with the block in. I don't really worry too much about shh, like doing the blending. But then when it comes to blending, it's good to have. Oh yeah, something I almost forgot to do. Um, when it comes to sh shading and shadows, um, if you notice, when it comes to the shadow, um, this shadow right here, this is what we call a cast shadow. It's sharp. It is hard edged. And 
if you look here this one is blended it's soft and it gradiates out this is called a form shadow so basically there's two kinds of shadows the form shadow and the cast shadow cast shadow is the one it's a shadow that's created when there is um light and say for example you bring your hand over something and there's shadow underneath it that's a cast shadow typically those things are hard but only if it's a single light source if there's more light sources it's going to get softer and that's another thing because uh, i'm just going to say when it comes to light it kind of like matters about how many light sources you have if you have a lot of light sources and the shadow the cast shadow and the form shadow are going to be very soft almost not there but then if you do like a single um uh source uh, light source it's going to be kind of like how the sphere is where it's kind of like a noticeable form shadow noticeable cast shadow and um you can learn more about that light stuff in the books i recommended um just in case if you missed it again it's going to be color and light by james gurney and light for visual artist by richard yacht and um you, i'm pretty sure you can find it on amazon if not i'll probably put a link to them in the description and go ahead but basically that's like a basic thing in terms of like cast shadow form shadow and of course depending on the amount of light source you have it could follow different rules but that's like a, the basic rules and let's go ahead and focus on this girl and what i usually do in terms of how i handle shading in terms of like um, how I do on my streams, how I do on my usual drawings that you see on my DeviantArt. Um, I go ahead and figure out, huh, what kind of background is going to be with this person? You're wondering, like, why are you thinking about the background? Because the background kind of has an influence on what you're working on. And because when it comes to the background, it kind of, um, here, let me, let me just show you. Let's say, oh, excuse me, I'm going to be doing a blue background, a blue background, and you know what? Let's make it special. Let's make it kind of like a pinkish, fabulous, so kind of pinkish, purplish, like that. There we go. Ooh. And then she pop. Well, actually, too much, too much red. Dark. Ooh. And if you notice here, I'm just like playing with the colors, trying to find out which one works best with her. She blends in too much with the background for that one, so I'm gonna be. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, it hurts my eyes. Uh, she's she's all blue, so let's go ahead and just have it where she's like. There we go. Yeah, just blew it! And then it's like, oh, so this is kind of like the background. But then you can't just like slap this color on there. Let me go ahead and grab what I usually use. You can't just like slap this color on there and expect like magic because it's gonna be like. What the hell? Where's, where's my color? There. You're gonna be like, uh, it doesn't really look like a shadow. And then, so what you can do is, you can just grab this color that you want, and then make it a little bit darker by bringing it to the blue area, and then track this down a little bit more so it's like a darker color. And there you go. Then you could just go in, start blocking in the colors you want. And so let's say that my uh, uh, my light source is right there. That's my light source. Let's go ahead and start shading. And this area. And also, it it's good to know what kind of like the help. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about that too much. For the sake of the tutorial, I'll pretend that part's already like correctly colored, not shitty colored like it is now. <laughs> and it's good to know like how certain material works. Like. See, I just caught myself. I'm working on little bits. You shouldn't be doing that. You should just go ahead, make a big brush, have fun. So I'm going to distinguish the sides that I want black. If you notice, not black or shaded. Photoshop's a little running behind. It hates me like that, so don't worry. <laughs> but generally, already from j just doing this alone, I already kind of know what I want. And then 
That's when I start to like slowly go in. Okay, so start shading the areas that I want shaded. And then you could just erase it later because it's on a different layer anyway. So yeah, 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 yeah. And you're like, oh, why are they so weird with that? It's like a Eh, it's gonna become pretty, just give it time. So what I should do now is start. Let's see, we don't. Cause now it's just like, oh my gosh, it's a blob. I don't understand anything in this blob of dark color. So I'm just gonna go in, start placing it up. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this area, I want this one to be in the light. That was in the light. Maybe this one was there. It's there. And since the light is casting here, that is going to be creating a bit of a shadow. This part is going to be out, not all of it. So that part's still. And then the way I'm doing this, I'm pretending it's only like a single light source. And because, as mentioned, if you focus on just like multiple light sources, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to do. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure some of you are like, oh, what was the point of doing that entire, like, lesson on blending and how to do it realistically and blah 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 blah. Um, I just wanted to show how to do it like that just in case you're interested in doing it like that. But if you're only interested in doing the way that I do it, that's perfectly fine. But this is but like it's good to know how to blend. It's good to know how to be able to get those little like how to be able to make a sphere, how to do like primitives like that. And even um, masters, like master of your craft, like other digital artists, I remember there's this one female digital artist that came to my school who did a panel, and she said that one way that she handles like um, art block, especially if she has to keep working on it, she um, goes back and starts working on primitives, so then she doesn't become rusty, so then she isn't like spending days on it and just doing nothing. She works on primitives and so primitives are basically like the basic things as I mentioned it's like basic shapes and um, basic forms and you could go ahead and do like sketches of like anatomy if you want but only just simple things start start off with simple things and then after a while you're gonna start being revived from that again and of course when it comes to artists it's different for each person and as I mentioned when it comes to the way I handle the shadow, I remember, I think about, of like, oh, how does this thing form? How does this thing react in this way? Like, for example, this ribbon um, right here. I want these parts to be kind of like popping up, so then I'm going to go ahead and make it so that that light is touching that area. But since that light is touching that area, I'm going to go ahead and have to include some light there. Some there. Yeah. Just light in the appropriate places. Places. I'm not that Asian. Come on, I'm Filipino. <laughs>
Well, that took a lot longer than I thought. But anyways, oh shit! I just noticed something. Okay. So, if you noticed, I noticed while recording the video, one also editing, that um, I started talking and rambling while drawing the shading for her, maybe around here, and then I just resolved to just start fast forwarding because I realized like oh my god this video is already getting long enough as it is and I gotta make sure that these people don't get bored so I just went ahead and fast forwarded and um so as you can tell here I already finished the shading and what I usually like to do is when it comes to the shading I don't like to keep it this color because it's gonna be like oh but what about all the work I did in coloring all this other stuff don't worry don't worry so you could go ahead and go to this little area. I don't know what it's called. And it's the one that says normal dissolve, all these like other settings, and then I just like to like look for the one that I like the best. Like go through each one. So far, multiply looks pretty good. Color burn, I do not like it. Uh, let's see. Multiply. Uh, so far, multiply is the one. Not any of these because when it comes to light and screen, color dodge, all these other ones, it makes it lighter. Well, when it comes to darken, to darken color, these ones make it where whatever you're making is dark. And then these ones, it's just like, I don't know what these ones are, but yeah, that one's a little bit too blue of a D of a dye for me. And that's saying something because it's like, I love the color blue. Mm -hmm. And so far it's multiply that's taking my heart. I check out oh no. No 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 no. No 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 no. Oh I like this one. In, in case I want to make it look like she's like outside in the sun, but I'm not gonna do that. I, I don't wanna do that. Not yet. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa Okay. Uh, oops, I was already there. <laughs> Saturation, look, color, look, luminosity. Whoa. Anyways, out of all these, I multiply. Only thing I didn't like about it is that it was kind of dark, so I'm just gonna bring that layer opacity down, adjust it to where I like it. There we go. And that's basically how I do shading when it comes to um, the drawings I do. But then if you wanted. If you wanted me to show how I do it in my digital art, I'm gonna have to do that in a different, different, um, yeah, different video. Because this one is already long enough as it is, and as they say, um, keep it long enough to cover everything, but short enough to keep it interested. And I round it a lot. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate you guys like watching this video. Hopefully, you learned something from it, and um, if not, I just want to say I'm sorry. But if you did, I really am happy that you learned something from this video. And if you guys want to see a different kind of tutorial, just go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Or you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter, send it to me on Twitter. And um, just message, or yeah, just tweet at me, message me saying, hey, can you do this kind of tutorial? And then when I'm ready to do another, I'll go ahead and post a little poll on Twitter. Anyways, I already talked enough. You guys are probably already bored of me. So anyways, have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.